Hello everyone, welcome back. History with Hilbert here, and today I'm going to be talking about Gibraltar because it's been in the news with the EU referendum in Great Britain and the uh, Brexit vote going through. The Spanish are now pushing for control over Gibraltar. There was even a Spanish warship sighted in British waters, which was then told to leave. In Britain, as always, we haven't really taken news too seriously. As far as the United Kingdom prepared to go to look after Gibraltar's interests. Oh, we're going to look after Gibraltar. Gibraltar's going to be well, Gibraltar's going to be protected all the way all the way. of you who don't know, Gibraltar is a little peninsula off the southern coast of Spain. Now it's famous for the big rock which is called El Peñón de Gibraltar in Spanish and the native Janito which is a sort of creole between English, Spanish, Genoese, Portuguese, Hebrew uh, and other things which is spoken in, in Gibraltar as well as for the monkeys which are famous for casual vandalism and harassment of the people who live there and also for the very impressive fortresses, the first one being built by the Moors on Gibraltar. Now, some of you might be wondering, why is this tiny little peninsula with a huge big rock slap bang in the middle British territory when the rest of the country obviously belongs to Spain because this is, you know, thousands of miles away from Great Britain? And that's a good question. Well, to find out the answer, we have to go back to 1704. Now, in 1704, Europe was at war, and it's thanks to this guy keeling over four years earlier, the Emperor Charles II. And this kick started a war called the War of Spanish Succession, or the Spanish War of Succession. Now, the situation with the Spanish War of Succession is very complicated, but I'm going to try and break this down. So basically, the French wanted to inherit everything left behind in Charles's empire, including France, Spain, and all of their territory in Europe. Now, this was unacceptable to the British, who at this time were very closely linked to the Dutch Republic. Who themselves didn't want a repeat of 1672 called het rampjaar in Dutch which means the disaster year and you can obviously guess why we didn't want that to happen again. Now the Spanish although not all of Spain sided with the French against a reformed Holy Roman Empire especially Austria. Now in Spain the Aragonese were markedly anti-French unlike their compatriots supported the Allies. Portugal first signed a defensive pact with Spain and France but persuaded by English money and trade, changed its mind and instead supported the Allies against their Spanish neighbours. In response, the Spanish invaded Portugal, which was fairly poorly defended. At the time, the best navies in the world were the English and Dutch fleets, which had been combined by William III, or as he's known in Dutch, Willem, Stadthouder van Holland, Zeeland, Utrecht, Gelre, Zutphen, Overijssel en Drenthe, Koning van Engeland, Schotland en Ierland. It's much easier saying that in English. Now, to help the Portuguese, an Anglo-Dutch fleet sailed around the French coast and around the Spanish and Portuguese coasts to Gibraltar. Now, why Gibraltar, you might ask, when you could just attack them in Belgium, which was then called the Spanish Netherlands, and they did, but they wanted to open up another front. Now, one of the grand strategies of the Allies in the Spanish War of Succession was to attack the French and the Spanish from as many fronts as possible, because they did surround them. You had the Dutch, they had the buffer zone with the Spanish Netherlands, where the British sent troops you had the austrians which is sort of the more german side you know they could attack the french there and now also the portuguese who are now allies they could also attack the spanish with the help of uh, the area of aragon and catalonia who could also attack the french and the spanish when the allied fleet reached gibraltar they bombarded the town and then sent marines to the shore in landing craft between the landmarks called the old and new moles on gibraltar now, essentially, this would have been like an early 18th century D-Day, with the cannons and muskets of the Spanish firing all around the ears of the Dutch and English marines. And yet they did succeed in taking the town from the Spanish after several days, an event which is still commemorated on the 50 pence coin of the Gibraltar currency. Now, much of the native Spanish population fled Gibraltar after the Allied occupation, believing their soldiers would soon recapture the town. Now, in the meantime, settlers from Britain repopulated the town, as well as many Jews of various nationalities, adding many Hebrew words to the Creole spoken there to this day. 
Now that's why Gibraltans feel more British than Spanish, because essentially they are. The Spanish tried to retake the town and fortress several times after 1704, most notably during the American War of Independence from 1779 to 1783 in what became known as the Long Siege, but ultimately failed, which is why Gibraltar is still British to this day. Alright everyone, thanks very much for watching this video about why Gibraltar is now British. Although, personally I think the British should just, you know, wash their hands of all this nonsense and give it to the Dutch. After all, we helped capture this place, so make Gibraltar Dutch, we're still in the EU, sorted all your problems. On a serious note, if you'd like to see any more videos about the history of Gibraltar, or perhaps about the language spoken there called Genito, which I mentioned a few times in passing, then just comment below and I'd be happy to do that for you. Alright everyone, Everyone, thanks very much for watching. If you're new, check out some of my other videos if it interests you, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks again, and remember, make Gibraltar Dutch again. <laughs>